Well, good afternoon. Bobby Lee here from Hurricane Creek Farms. And my goodness, that is a lot of beef. That is a, one entire steer worth of beef right there. I gotta get that unloaded in the freezer because it is a hot one today. But while I'm getting ready to do that, y'all give the video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and let's get into it. So I'm backed up here in the garage, obviously. Odd place to start out a video, but backed in here where we can unload it. Easier, unloaded a couple of coolers in there in the house. I'll just show you, I'm gonna take some more of the rest of this, basically, um, some family, my dad, my brother, cousin, uncle, folks like that. Just a few of the folks who help us out throughout the year. What better way to pay them back than with some of the beef that they helped us raise. But you can see, because I know we'll get lots of questions of how much beef is in you know, a carcass. This one was 636 pounds. So that should yield you 636 pounds of carcass weight, I should clarify. It's gonna yield you about 400 pounds of actual beef. So, of course, here's the stuff everybody likes. The ribeyes, the sirloins, some round steaks. Just give me some T-bones, yeah. T-bones right there. Um, of course, an enormous amount of just ground beef. Yep. Uh, ground beef and roast a lot of times makes up an awful lot of it. But, yeah, the... Um, that was that Jersey cross steer um, that we had said all along we would keep. I'm sure he's gonna make just fantastic beef, but I wasn't gonna sell him because he's not a traditional beef breed. Um, Jersey Brahmin cross, so interesting uh, match there. But anyway, chit chatted plenty. We're gonna get this delivered because it's about 90 degrees today. You may can see a sheen of sweat on me. 90, I think it was 90 yesterday, then it's gonna be 90 again tomorrow. I think it was just last week, maybe have been in the last video, I commented we had a day where the high wasn't even out of the 60s so over a month to go until summer and already having temperatures like this not good just to give you kind of another visual on how much you know a steer or a half a steer worth of beef looks like so ignore this top shelf but this shelf this shelf and this shelf that's a half a carcass um, ground beef here steaks which includes our ribeyes t-bones and sirloins and then all our roast and round steaks right here so you can see obviously that shelf pretty well packed steaks eh, not really ground beef pretty well packed so everybody's always super excited about getting the steaks i am too already th got some ribeyes thawing out for tonight at our house but i always warn people don't buy uh, you know a whole carcass or half carcass of beef just for the steaks because you'll be a little disappointed just in the sheer volume. You better be a family that consumes a lot of ground beef. Um, I do have folks that really just don't cook a lot of roast. They don't they don't enjoy using the slow cooker, the pressure cooker, any of those techniques. So they'll have a lot of this ground and then those, those end up with like twice as much ground beef. So that's always an option too. But anyway, wanted to get that unloaded. That, that's some still left over from last year, some roast and whatnot. Um, that's what I do. I give all my roast to my dad because he cooks um, Sunday lunch for us most weeks uh, after church and he cooks an awesome beef roast. I can't beat his, so I just let him have the roast and I still get to eat it. So we made those stops, got that beef delivered. Gonna check in once again on the beauty of the operation, doing some basic horse barn chores. And I hate to even, say it i hate to admit that we're about to have to do it i'm gonna have to grab the fence and stuff the pioneer and go work on some fences now that it's 2 30 in the afternoon and 90 plus degrees so really didn't time when we had some more fencing to do very well at all hottest day of the year by far and uh but yeah we moved those heifers home last weekend and they have found every hole in the cross fences imaginable which we let the cross fences kind of get in poor repair Obviously, they don't matter quite as much as the perimeter fence, but we got to get those back in good shape. And it may help her get a few more chores done. We don't make her do all this herself. One of the main reasons why I'm prompted to fence all of a sudden today is getting home last night from the t-ball game. Pretty much this whole crew, maybe not quite all of them, because the bull was definitely not amongst them. I don't think that darkest red cow was, but this Hereford cow here and then all the little heifers were up there basically in our driveway with nothing between them and you know the rest of the world but 
just green grass. Um, so they, they weren't in a terrible spot. It's really grown up up there. The one reason I haven't put the electric fence back up to let them graze that is I want to let the guys doing the arena construction um, get done where none of that would be in their way before I let them up there. But yeah, we knew the, the cross fence in several spots is just not great. The cows had been pretty well respecting it still, but these girls had no regard for where the fence used to be. So we're gonna do a little patching. Before I dive right into fencing, I'm gonna do my obligatory complaint about the buttercup part of the video. But no, not, not really. You can actually probably appreciate, I mean, obviously buttercup's still very noticeable, but it's starting to fade away, fading quickly now that we're on the 11th of May. But now that it is kind of starting to fade, you can just see how much clover is out in here. All that white clover blooming, um, you know, really, especially in these spots, they really haven't grazed hard. Just an enormous amount of clover here, more than, you know, you could really even appreciate just a couple of weeks ago, which highlights why we're not jumping in here to spray this buttercup or why we did, wouldn't do any good to spray it at this point anyway, but why we didn't spray it, you know, a month or two ago, we did not want to sacrifice all that clover. Um, yeah, you can just see, man, that is just some nice, nice clover out of here and plenty of it. So I don't know, until there's a herbicide that we can spray that won't damage the buttercup, it'll, or won't damage the clover, but it'll kill the buttercup, probably just gonna have to hold off. Just know that you can just bear with it till about the middle of May, the buttercup's pretty much gone you know, until the next year. But I've uh, procrastinated long enough. We're just gonna have to get to doing some fence, which is a little breeze blowing right now, so it's not terribly uncomfortable, and we are gonna be over here in the shade. So all this cross fence along the creek, not in great shape, but you see right here, we've got like two, three wires up there at the top, then nothing all the way to the ground. So I think they're walking right through there and then just crossing the creek. Now it's not in terrible shape through here. Should hold animals back anyway. But let's see. It may be in decent shape the rest of the way. I mean, this is not stellar by any means, but you can raise that wire up just a bit. Um, but yeah, just fix it to where, you know, we can actually rotate pastures um, because if your cross fences are in shambles, it really is pointless to even try to do that. And if you listen to the Talk Dirt to Me podcast, you know that, um, you know, we like to highlight American manufacturing. One of the companies we have talked about on there before is Moore Maker. Uh, glare hitting that just right. Out of, uh, where is it? I believe it's Matador, Texas. Yeah, Matador, Texas right there. You can see Made in USA. It's a couple of their tools. It's a brand new. Have not even gotten to use it yet, but I like this style of fencing plier. Um, I've had multiple cheaper versions of this um we're actually gonna try that one out um been using this one for a while i've had a couple of their other tools in the past too got some of their pocket knives but yeah made in the usa i believe that's more important now than maybe it just about ever has been but we're gonna put those used for the first time get this patched very much a patchy fencing job just trying to get it to where to hold them back um, again, the other side of the creek that we're fencing them out of, essentially, right here. It's just more of our pasture, so it's not like this is keeping the animals out of the highway where they could potentially get themselves injured or killed or someone injured or killed. But still, need good cross fences, but I like these. Um, cut wire, I'll, I'll try to show them in use here in a minute. You might ever use really cheap fencing pliers. You know, sometimes you gotta cut the wire and you gotta get it just right, or you know, maybe it'll cut with this side, but not with the other side. You know, there's not very precisely made, but I like that. Of course, bright yellow handle, important because inevitably, like I just did, I will stupidly, I will use them and instead of dropping them back in the belt, I'll be using them, I'll lay them down, I'll walk off and the ground's not always as clean in some of the spots for fencing as it is right here, so. When I inevitably lose them, I'll be able to locate them a little easier. I think the evidence shows this is probably actually the spot they were mostly coming and going. You can see nice path right through here and right on out through there. So we just have 
And again, on, on a cross fence, we're typically happy with four wires. Um, perimeter fence, we want five. Um, you know, at least. Let me get those untangled. And right here, because those two were basically up there together, we basically had two wires. So, it's just kind of in a shambles. We've got all these vines. We're going to tie at least a couple more wires just across there. And kind of ironically, I think um, as soon as I get this done, I'm going to try to call all the cows and put them over there. So now I do want them to go over there. Uh, but then, of course, while they're over there, I don't want them to be able to come back here. So fence still serves its purpose. But we'll, uh, we'll work on doing some form of a halfway decent patch job here. Vines get on everything. Are you kidding me? Right. Didn't do a very good job of devining. Yep, new pliers. Cuts through that wire like butter. as I pull those tight, or this new wire tight, it loosens up some of those old wires. Okay, kind of an embarrassingly shady fencing job I've done there, but we're not going to walk right out like they have the last couple of days, so there's at least one more spot I need to fix. But they hadn't been getting out there, and it is about time I need to go pick up kids. So we're probably going to have to call it quits. Other than we're going to check on the cows, see if we can get them to move pastures. Cows are looking good. So we've got a couple that have jumped into that pasture, just on the other side of the tree line. So no doubt there's more cross fences that need to be patched that I'm not going to have time to get to today. But I'd like for them to all be in this pasture we're currently in. Get, so if I can shut the gate over there, there's still a few in there. And then over the next day or two, move them through the gate up there into the next pasture. A lot of them want to be out there in that pasture because they haven't been in there since last fall. But there, there's still just not that much grazing in there, um, in large part due to uh, the fact that the horses and donkeys are in there all year. Some breeding action going on. Um, I missed the action shot there for you, but white face cow over there is in heat. We'll go see who that is. I like to write down these dates just so uh, next February I can go ahead and be looking and saying, hey, they were breeding that one cow on May the 11th. Be watching her close. She should be calving, you know, whatever day that correlates to 285 days from now in the middle of next February. But anyway, we'll see if we can get the rest of them through those gates and at least get those shut. Yeah, number 74, white face cow right there is the one in heat. Her boyfriend there, panting heavily, apparently. He's had a little bit of a mid-afternoon workout. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can ease them on up that way. She even has these little young bulls' attention. Everybody, everybody loves number 74. At least today they do. And as you can see out here, we're gonna have to be doing some clipping before long. We got some of these broadleaf weeds. And again, buttercup's about done. We're not worried about it. It's these these bigger broadleaf weeds that are going to take over in the, just this little part of this bottom. Um, just on the pasture we rent. So we'll get in here and clip this. We really need to just any time now. But our goal will be within the next couple of weeks to get that accomplished. We got one more of this other white faced cow. If we can get her through there, we're going to shut these gates. On through there, mama cow. There we go. There we go. Well, I just noticed some of the perils of working with barbed wire. It gets you. I guess maybe I'm getting old. My my thin my skin is getting fragile and thin. So the arena construction update. First, I will tell you every time I look out here, I'm reminded of the the Tiger King, the Joe Exotic. Uh, kind of meme or gif or whatever where he's or just the scene from the tv show where he says 
I'm never going to financially recover from this. And yeah. So they moved an enormous amount of dirt to give us a nice, perfectly level spot. Hauled in. God only knows how much limestone. I'm sure they could tell us. Now I think they're they're bringing in some sand, um, which is going to be um, on top of this. Will kind of be the surface that we'll actually ride on um, the limestone. I think just to help it drain. But anyway, I guess once they get the uh, the sand spread, they may be pretty much done. Then we will we're going to go ahead and put fence, you know, very similar to what's right here along the side of the house, around the other three sides. We'll come up through here with it too but um yeah so I, I was joking my wife you know how long before we have to put a roof over it and then put lights in it or or maybe light it so at least they can ride at night yeah i don't know yeah. she swears this is gonna be it hey it's gonna be done right it's gonna be gonna be nice but um <laughs> yeah it, it, if your wife or your kids if you're married you know and then are thinking about getting horses I hope I hope you're you're financially prepared for it. I don't know of any other hobby that, that could be any more expensive than than horses, horse show, and anything like that. But enjoy it. it. Keeps the kids out of trouble. Gives them something to work for. I'm all for it. Well, the wild man and I have hopped in the jeep, ridden back down here to another form of stalker steers. We're gonna take advantage of the dry weather and go ahead and move them back to this middle pasture. Uh, you probably heard me talk about it. It's a little hard getting in and out of there with a the vehicle when it's real wet and muddy. Uh, and we're as dry as we've been, well, this year, pretty much no doubt. So go ahead and move them back to that pasture. That they've, now you can see there's still pretty decent grazing in here, but they've grazed it down pretty hard. Um, and that pasture should be more than ready for them and then especially at the other end um, of the farm on the north end. But see so if we can, it's about, looks like about half of them, a little over half, 34 of them right here. We'll get them moved and then we'll go around and see the other part of them that I assume is back in the other little pasture that's opened up to where they are right now. And there's the mud hole that makes getting back to this pasture a little bit tricky, but. No big deal for the Jeep, as dry as it is right now. But yeah, another benefit of having a dozer is we can probably fix this road up a lot better to get in and out of here. But I think they're all following me back there. We'll get them moved. All right, so they all came through that gate over there. We're gonna go ahead and shut it. They sit here and munch. You can see, yeah, it's grass. And all the fescue is headed out. We're gonna need to get back here and clip before too long. So we got some pasture clipping to do pretty much everywhere. But yeah, we'll kind of go back out to that other pasture. Make sure we find those other 23 head. Well, not so fast, my friend, as Lee Corso would say. We got a few down here. That dude looks like he might have even been stuck in a mud hole, maybe somewhere. I mean, he is filthy. Um, Willis had a t-ball game last Friday night and uh, fields were in questionable condition to play. We were actually surprised they were able to play and uh, Willis looked about like that steer uh, by the time the game was over. And similar to the steer, he was three times as muddy as the next muddiest kid on the team. But hey, that's the life of a four-year-old farm kid. He ain't, a, ain't afraid of getting dirty. Putting the young man to work. Yeah, drag that bunk up here. <laughs> there you go. I believe we have 37 head, counting those two over there. Unless there's maybe one more over there that I can't see. We'll ride over there. Then we're gonna ride. The other ones are over here in another pasture. The gate's closed. We'll open that gate, we'll close the other one. Or they'll have to come this way. But, appreciate your help, buddy. Again, obviously plenty of forage in here between a lot of fescue, a lot of white clover, a little bit of red, got a little ryegrass scattered out, um, a little bit of orchard grass in here. Here's some orchard grass. Um, but 
yeah, the grass is plentiful right now. We just hope it remains that way all summer long. Yeah, there's a nice little clump of rye. Bye-bye, ladybug. All right, bye-bye to the ladybug. It was orange. I just picked it up and it flew away. That's right. Well, Charlie always finds them at school. You always find ladybugs no, at school? Charlie does. Charlie always finds them at school, so shout out to Charlie for being a good... Um, nature observer go ahead, went ahead and open up this gate going to the next pasture and always a little bit questionable crossing right here that uh that ditch is spring fed up there on up that holler so i've never gotten the jeep stuck there yet <laughs> yet being the keyword see if i can set the camera up um, so you can all see if we make it this time Never a doubt. Whoa. I might get muddy after all though. Here are what looks like the rest of the boys, but I'm afraid we're one short. Down there there's two, four, six, eight, nine, so three, six, nine, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. No, 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 there's, there are 20. We had 37 over there. So that's a full, what easy math there, 57. That is all of them. Um, there were 65 down here. Of course, we took those eight heifers home, but yeah, so that's everybody accounted for. We came in just down the other side of this hill, so we crossed that ditch. There's another gate up here that goes back to that front pasture. We're gonna drive through that one, shut it behind us. So they'll be in this pasture and that next one. They really, they don't have what I consider reliable water in this tiny little pasture. And so it's, it's only like, I don't know, maybe five or six acres in here, really good grazing, maybe some of the best grass on the farm but no consistent water other than there is that spring fed ditch which this time of year it's wet enough that that it is pretty consistent but i never really intended on this being a, a pasture where they stayed exclusively in it so we'll let them graze this one and that next one for the next few days before we move on to the north end another little forge moment see the crimson has pretty well played out those are the blooms not not so crimson anymore see if you have them still got some color to them but the crimson clover by this time of year has about done its thing the white and the red are still going strong you know all this fescue is headed out um our pasture weed to talk about here for a moment we got some thistle we got those scattered out not terribly bad in any of the pastures but those are here and there i don't like them even when they're not making up a big portion of the pasture they're just an eyesore but all these boys are accounted for. We're gonna shut these gates. We gotta get home and we're gonna eat some beef. Hey, are we gonna eat some beef tonight? We are, I got some, some ribeyes laid out. Why? Oh, good, he has got a Sharpie. So nothing can go wrong there, right? Made it back home, got, got veggies grilling. Got a couple of Brahma Jersey Cross ribeyes about to go on the grill. Who needs certified Angus beef? which I thought about, what do you call a Jersey Brahmin cross? I'm like, it's gotta be just a German, right? I don't know. I, I don't know if that'll stick or not, but no, sitting out here thinking, grass is green. We got we got grass come out of our ears. You just saw that as we were checking on those stalker steers, especially on the other farm. Kids been over there playing in the sand pile in the arena, then having to take a water hose bath. We got a beautiful wife here about to enjoy the steak with me. You know what, there's a lot going on in the world right now, but life is pretty good. Maybe we're just privileged and insulated from it all right here in West Tennessee. But, you know, and I certainly wish they wouldn't have just sent $40 billion of our hard-earned money to the other side of the world. Not that I don't feel sorry for those people, but I certainly feel like there's more to that story than we're being told. Well, they can't even get formula. Right, well, that's the big thing, everybody. But anyway, yeah. A lot going on, but at the end of the day, we still feel like, I don't know, there's a lot to be thankful for, but we're getting ready. Obviously, you can see we're going to eat beef, but I'll let you, you send it off. What do we say? Eat beef and God bless. There you go. Y'all have a good one.